Hi, thanks for joining me today. I'll be having my daughter Izzy on in just a little bit. She's going to help me with the spiralized noodles. I thought this would be a really fun thing to do today because we've got a lot of uh, butternut squash to use up and uh, it's really fun to make these noodles as a change from usually we have like rice noodles or sweet potato noodles but we love these veggie noodles and I bought one of these OXO spiralizers last maybe January or February because I was cooking for a client that really liked spiralized veggie noodles and I didn't think I was really going to use it much for myself but um, I've been using it a lot uh, we all um, like different kinds of noodles that you can make with it. I'm using the smallest noodle setting that makes kind of like a, it's kind of like a spaghetti. Uh, so anyway, I recommend it if you're looking for one. This one's really easy to find online or at Target, I think is where I got it. So what you'll need today is some kind of vegetable that you want to spiralize. Uh, it should be something that's relatively straight, so like a zucchini, a sweet potato, or a butternut squash are good options. Let me know if you found something else that works really well for spiral veggie noodles. And then for the sauce, can you see this from overhead, Nelson? Or should I move it over a little? Um, so for the sauce, you're gonna need onion, garlic, fresh basil. And if you don't have fresh basil, you can use another herb like um, cilantro. But since basil is in season right now, I thought we would use that one. And then we're gonna actually saute the ingredients to go into the sauce. And uh, we're gonna steam the noodles. So pretty, pretty simple. I'm gonna start by peeling the squash. So just put that into here. And this kind of butternut is from my garden and I, it's the first time I've ever grown squash. It's the first year I've had a vegetable garden. And they're not as bright orange as the ones that you get at the store. They're more of a mix between butternut and a zucchini in flavor and color, but they're really, really good for noodles. And they go great with the coconut sauce that we're gonna make. You could also use a traditional pesto for this. Grab my knife. And I'm gonna cut off the part just before the seeds um, because that part we're not really gonna be able to use for the noodles. Use that for something else. And so luckily I cut that pretty straight. I'm already, I'm kind of winded from doing that. That's kind of funny. I guess it's good exercise to peel and cut through a butternut squash. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try to get the squash in the middle of both of these holds. And then, Izzy, I need your help holding this, I think, so because on the wooden table it doesn't grip as well as it does on a smooth counter. slide this over because shortly we're going to be making shortly we're going to start making the sauce. Okay, which part do you want to do? The cranking? Okay. You have stuff on your fingers. It's 
Yeah, my hands got really sticky from the butternut squash peel. Okay. All right, so hold this so you're pushing it against that. And it's working. You see that, Nelson? Mm -hmm. And periodically you may need to cut the... So are you going this direction? No, I mean towards the blade, mm -hmm. pushing it this way. No, she's doing it right. Hmm. Let me try the. Doesn't work. You want to try hold? Oh, I think it's working again. Uh, am I? I think it's clogged. It's clogged. Let me see. I have to just line it up again. Sometimes. Oh. It's soft in the middle, so it totally doesn't work if it's soft in the middle. We've discovered that. So let's try this side. Careful, that's real sharp. So for some reason, there's kind of a hole in there where it should be solid. Okay, try it again. Just have to get through this soft, mushy part and then to the... I couldn't we cut it? Let me try it. Working? Not really. Oh, I did for a second. Let's just cut it. I think it's very close to being. Okay. Try that again? Mm -hmm. Okay. We're gonna try it again. When it's a little soft or hollow in the middle, it doesn't work, but now we're back to, glad that happened because now you know if that happens to you, just cut it down until you're past that seedy part. Did anybody have one of those Play-Doh creation, create, creation stations? I forget what they call them. I wanted one of those. I don't think I had one. Oh, I know. It was called Play-Doh Fun Station. I think some of my friends had one of those. Can't we do like this or something? It's hollow on both sides, so I don't think it's going to work. We, we can use that to put in soup or curry or something. Careful. It Again, is working. Tiny little. <laughs> We're getting shorter noodles, but it is working until it gets to the mushy part again. Yeah. But just be real careful near the blade that you don't put your fingers near the blade at all. And you need to wash the brush. I mean, wash this grater or the julienne thing with a brush or, you know, with the um, sprayer in your sink. Don't put your hand or a sponge near it because it'll just shred your sponge or cut your hand. You definitely don't want. We can reuse, reuse these. Okay, so in a minute when this is boiling, Izzy, can you put some of the noodles in and then when they're done steaming, we can put them in the strainer and just let those wait while we make the sauce. So that did actually hold better than the last time we tried to do that. Okay, it looks like it's starting to boil, so you can go ahead and put some of those in. You wanna use the tongs or or you can just put them in. Uh, the comment is your stream is frozen. 
when they tell people that. Yeah. So we've been having internet problems from our provider for the last 24 hours. And so it looks like our internet's working, but not at the, the way it should be. Um, go to the wheel in the right hand corner of your um, screen. You can also um, reset your page or um, it's another way of saying refresh. that. Refresh your page. But go to that wheel and set the streaming speed to a slower speed. You don't want it to be at the 700 one, maybe the 400 one or the 200 one would be better. But sorry about that if it's we're, we're aware of the problem, but we don't really know how to solve it because we think it is due to the spectrum. I don't know if anyone else in Austin is having that issue. People have been having that problem with AT&T. So they act like Falcons are actually talking about that. And I don't know if it's because there's so much streaming and conferences going on, especially around noontime, but it could be. Um, partially, they're overloaded. I don't know. Could, yeah. So this month on Cooking Together subscription, which is separate from our Wednesday live shows, it's something that if you wanted to subscribe to it, um, it's $10 a month or $99 for the year. And you get access to a whole library of recipes and um, instructional videos and health tips. And so every week we do something new and every month we have a new theme. So this month we're doing a theme on Asian cooking, which is very broad. We know that, but um, I just thought we would start with that for the summer so, so we could use some really cooling ingredients and have some new flavors introduced. So we've done pad thai. Uh, we're about to do a Vietnamese pho or pho with lemongrass broth. I'm really excited about that one. And uh, what was the first one we did, Nelson? Make your own sushi. Oh yeah, we did rainbow sushi. And then the last pizza. one, a pizza. that wasn't part of the Asian month. That oh. was part of the spring break the Friday of spring break, we did that. Um, and then we're gonna do a stir fry actually, show you the technique of making a perfect stir fry. So the benefit to us of doing this subscription is keeping in touch with all of you, all the subscribers that take part in it and hearing what you're interested in learning about. Someone recently said they were interested in learning about Italian cooking, so we're probably gonna do that next. We've done a month of French cooking, healthy Southern France cooking. We did one on one pot meals that we did at the beginning of the stay at home period. Um, and we did Latin American favorites. So we did Caribbean, Costa Rica, and uh, Mexico. So anyway, I hope you'll check that out. But we'll be here every Friday for our Facebook Live too. So why don't you put those into here, Izzy? So one way, I guess I'm better positioned to do that. So I may have cooked those a little bit longer than I needed to, but you basically want to have um, your noodles either blanched very briefly or steamed. And usually, I think when I'm paying a little bit more attention, I steam them for a shorter time. But they're not, they're still intact. I didn't totally overcook them. So sometimes I saute them with a little olive oil and garlic, but since that's gonna be part of our sauce, could you bring this over? It might be hot, so careful. And turn it on to low, so go all the way down to light it a little more and then back up to low. Right. So this sauce is real simple, but it helps to put some of that in. 
just to kind of cover the bottom a tiny bit more. That's good. So you could use coconut oil or olive oil for this part. I'm going to saute the onions and garlic just to soften them and make them a little bit sweeter and make sure that um, when you blend them into the sauce with the coconut milk and the basil that they have a really nice flavor. So would you like to put them in? Okay. Right. So Izzy's going to see if it's ready. Yeah. And so you can put one little piece of onion in there and see if it's ready. If it sizzles, it means it's ready to go. And I like to heat up the pan first before I put the oil in. That's what I usually do. That way, when you put the oil in, it's instantly ready, and then you can add your veggies. Sometimes if I add oil to a cold pan, it takes so long to heat up that I forget what I'm watching and the oil starts to smoke. And at that point, it's not healthy for you anymore. So you have to start over. So I'm gonna go search for the salt while you saute that. Is it? So if you want the onions to soften rather than caramel. Right, rather than caramelize or brown, then you can put a little salt in. That helps them sweat, brings moisture out. If you are trying to brown them for something like a, an Indian dish or um, caramelized onions, you usually don't salt it until later on after they're browned. Okay, let's put the garlic in. I put about like um, uh, a half cup of chopped onion, somewhere between a quarter cup and a half cup of chopped onion, and about four medium to large cloves of garlic. It helps with this sauce that has coconut, which is naturally sweet, to have the flavors of onion and garlic to balance it out and make it more of a savory sauce. Um, okay. Could you get me a spoon, Izzy? I think I'm gonna need one for the coconut milk. All right, so next we're gonna Pretty much put this in the blender with our basil. Our basil hasn't been going gangbusters this year, I think. Um, I had a plant that we got at the store that I divided into its individual plants and I think the roots were kind of damaged, so they've just been making these really small plants. And I tried growing some from seed and I think only one came up out of like 12 seeds. So struggling a bit with um, growing basil this year. I need to maybe get some new plants. But when we were first looking for basil plants back in April and May, it was the beginning of the pandemic. All the nurseries were closed or the ones that we go to were closed. Grocery stores didn't have basil. It was like, so we finally had to get some at Lowe's or something like that. So I just thought I would add a little coconut milk to the onions, just to make sure we get all the flavor from the bottom of the pan. And then could you bring that uh, blender over? So it's kind of important to blend this sauce because then it will be nice and smooth and you'll get all the flavor of the basil into the sauce. But if you don't have a blender, you could chop everything finely, including the basil. So you can pretty much, you can pretty much put in there. I forgot I didn't take some of the stems off yet. Is that all of I think we can put it all in. So I'm putting about um, a cup of packed basil, and you can use more or less depending on how green you want the sauce to be. I've made a similar sauce that also has 
fresh ginger and lemon and lime zest and um, uh, let me put a little bit of salt in there too. I think it has fish sauce, the other one. So this is a simpler version of that. So we don't have to go crazy with, should I, let me put a little more coconut milk in so it'll blend better. So it looks like I put, there's almost two cups in here. I put about maybe a third cup of coconut milk. I kind of stirred it up before I put it in. Now we're gonna blend that up. when we make this for dinner um, we'll serve the noodles with some fish like a white fish or a salmon um, at lunchtime I don't know you might just want to have this by itself or with a salad next to it would be nice Oh, let's try it, Izzy, before we hop into that little spoon. Mm -hmm. Usually I keep a bunch of spoons in there. Try it and see if it has a good flavor, if it has enough salt. It's good. It's pretty salty, isn't it? But it'll be good with the noodles because I haven't added any salt. So... I forgot to reserve a basil leaf for the top. Izzy, could you run and get one for me? Uh, just like one leaf or one little baby leaf or something that we can put on here. So if you're making, a, this is gonna make enough for like um, two to three servings. You could definitely add more basil, more coconut milk, a little more salt and make more servings. It's very flexible, so kind of like making pesto. Nice. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy making spiral noodles. Let me know if you have any questions or if you need any help. Um, I'll try to answer your questions and let me know how it goes. So have a great week.